Hey guys, it's me VegaRV2 and in this video I will be explaining Carfus and how to play him in mid lane, bot lane, jungle, as those are the three primary positions I would suggest playing this champion in. You can play him support on top lane, but it is not even close to being as good as the other ones. I'll be discussing matchups in each role, how to kind of draft him, and the builds and some mechanics and tips for Carfus. If you don't know who I am, and somebody just linked you this guide or whatever, um, I'm a challenger, mid laner, and jungler, and support. Uh, I'm Right now, I'm this account, I'm queuing bot lane mainly, and I'm challenger, but I'm not really playing marksman, I'm playing like Hamer, Sigs, and Carfus, and some stuff, so it's whatever. You can take it with a grain of salt, right? If you look at my champion history on all of my accounts, through my 20 and hundreds of accounts throughout the years you'll always see Carfus being in my most played and all of my it's like this I didn't play this account but you still see Carfus there and just throughout the years Carfus will always be in my most played on all of my accounts uh, I have easily over 2000 games on this champion with all of my accounts throughout the years combined so very very fun champion and I've spent countless hours grinding for this champion to work uh, so let's start with bot lane, as it's the best role for Carfus right now, and why it's the best role and the matchups and stuff. Um, and let's talk about Carfus as a champion and what he does, and what beats him and what doesn't. So starting off with his passive, basically you can use spells for 7 seconds when you are dead. Your Q has pretty long range, but it is a bit slow, so you can get outspaced by champions that are playing on the edge of your range. So some champs like Caitlyn with really long range or Ezreal Q, it can be hard to hit these champions sometimes. Whereas smaller range champions like Kai'Sa for example or Vayne and stuff like that, uh, your Q is much easier to hit. His W basically is a slow, the slow will get double eventually and becomes very very obnoxious. If you're versus Carfus on mid waves in mid game and late game, you can easily get picked off with this if you don't have any mobility. And he has Magic Pen Shred with his W, which is very handy for teamfights later on versus their frontline. His E is only useful if enemy comes into you, meaning that again range counters him and R. There is no counter to his R except for shields, meaning champions like Karma being annoying, um, or items like Lockets. Let's talk about Carfus's mechanics, because he has some before we go into more depth on items and matchups, because I need to explain this kit for you guys to understand why I'm saying what I'm saying. So, first mechanic on Carfus that is only really useful to know when you are jungling is how his auto attacks work. If I just stand here, and I just have my auto attack on, and I'm queuing, you will notice that my Q will cancel sometimes. I mean, not my Q, my auto attack. So here, if I just have my auto attack on, so you'll see it. Left to right, you know, it'll go like this. But if I start queuing, some of my autos will cancel. So, let's restart the game. And let's explain why. Let's say I'm now level 2. Right, so I'm playing Carfus and I'm level 2. Because I did my blue buff. Then, it would look like this. So now I want to do my grump. Here is my auto attack. Now I start involving my Q. There it cancelled. Now it'll go two good ones and now it'll cancel. Two good ones, now it'll cancel. And it's a consistent ratio. Where you can get two good autos and then they cancel and then two autos and then they cancel. So what you will see bad Carfuses do when they're trying to kite in early jungle players is they'll just spam autos and they'll cancel a lot of them meaning they'll take more damage because you're not kiting properly and you'll miss out on auto damage too. Um, so you have to learn this ratio. Next step to Carfus is to understand his passive and to maximize what you can get out of his passive. In early game you can only get free Qs off with your ulti and that is barely. So if I do this one two, three. You see? It's very clutch. As you progress into the game and you get more items, you obviously will get CDR, which doesn't do much to your Q, 
but it does do enough for you to be able to throw in a fourth queue. Now there is currently, of the time of this recording, a bug to Carthus, which makes it so that he cannot actually um, cast Q as soon as he dies. It's a bit of a delay. So I'm going to try to do four Qs. So there, that's about when I have to Q. If I do it instantly as soon as I die, I'm locked out of the animation. I can no longer Q. So I'm going to show you the quadruple Q combo. But it is a bit hard to do because of the bug. But I'll try. One, two, three, four. There we go. So that's four Qs. And once you get the hang of doing that, that is a lot more DPS in a team fight. Keep in mind, prolonging your R as long as possible can be good or bad. It can be good because if I make my R hit later, that means Leandris is ticking for later. It means my E with the Leandris and stuff like that can bleed for more before my R then restarts the Leandris, for example. But it can be bad because if I delay my R, their cooldowns can come up. So there will be times where as soon as I die, I will insta ulti. Because maybe something like a Karma Shield is on cooldown. Or I know some guy Sonya's is coming up. So then you do it the other way. You R and then you Q. See? So there I did 4Q but R first. So this is two different ways of doing it. Now next thing is your W gives you vision. One place like this I get vision. But there's a guy in here. So to get vision of him I need to do this. Same thing goes on walls. I can get vision but not over the wall. But on some walls you can. So you will have to learn this. E-toggling is useful to save mana. When you get CC'd, you cannot cancel your E always. And if you are in Sonya's, you cannot cancel your E. So if you are Sonya sing, right, you will lose a lot of mana. Because look, when I start putting points in my E, my mana goes down really fast. Right? So think about that as well. Um, the last mechanic to Carthus is with ulti, you can do ult and then flash. There's a brief window for this. It's not going to be useful that often in my 5,000 games like of playing uh, Carfus and Vegar combined of the 2,000s of Carfus games. Probably only remember doing this like once or twice. Like there's been instances where I will ulti and then I get hooked and then I will flash, you know? So if you wait too long, it doesn't work. So you have to do this and then flash. So this does work. So if you do press R and then you notice an ash arrow flying or something, you can flash. Uh, and it'll still go through. But if you wait too long, like that, it'll cancel. So keep that in mind. That's basically Carthus's mechanics. His Q also gives vision. So the rest is up to you, how you'll utilize the champion. Of course, in teamfights, you might want to W their frontline when you're dead, so that you get more value out of the magic pen. Sometimes you want to W the guy onto you. Sometimes in teamfights, you don't W at all, and you just hold it until you die, so that you can keep them in your passive, right? But these are the things to keep in mind. So as we move on, what do I not want to play Carthus against? So, like I said, Carthus has medium range, very telegraphed spells, and his E is only useful when they're diving you. Which naturally means that range counters him. I also mentioned how shields really counters Carthus. Heals does not counter Carthus as much as people think. People see Carthus and they think, I need to pick Soraka. I don't agree. I think Soraka is much easier to play against as Carthus than something like a Karma. Because if she ultis, she can only do that once they have taken damage. There are times where I can ulti and I will out damage Soraka heal. So I've already done damage. If I ulti and every time I ulti, Soraka is ulting, that's already like completely fine for me. And Soraka can't keep her teammates alive before they are low with the ulti. You know, if she ever uses her ulti, then, well, she doesn't do anything against Carthus anymore. Whereas Karma always will have access to Mantra E and just prevent pretty much almost all my damage. And um, it can be used even for full HP and stuff like that. Uh, like, if I ulti at the start of the fight, Soraka often doesn't want to ulti. You know, because of how it does more when lower. So, yeah. But she's not a bad pick into Carthus by enemies. It's, of course, good. 
but the biggest counter is Karma. Karma is obnoxious. Karma in lane is really strong. Karma makes for double counter pairings like Ash and Karma. Um, I was saying how Carfus wants people to dive in. So if you're going to engage onto Carfus, you want to either quickly kill him and get out, or engage from afar. Meaning, range engage like Ash R, Leona R, or an ulti. These type of things is going to be quite annoying for Carfus to deal with, compared to a hardcore committal engage like Amumu. Amumu goes onto Carfus, sure Carfus dies, but then the Amumu and his team probably dies in the progress uh, process. Same with Diana and same with like Diana Yasu. Alistar, these type of champions that goes in and they can't really get out. They are not very good versus Carfus champions like Samira. But range engage is how you're gonna engage onto Carfus. This means that the worst type of matchups for Carfus to play against is things like Ash. Uh, Ezreal paired with Karma is annoying, Ezreal by himself is not annoying, but something like Ezreal Bard can be annoying. General range, like when Severe was meta, was really annoying. Obviously you could beat her in lane a bit, but you can't end the game, you can't engage onto Severe yourself. And her spell shield is of course annoying, hard to ult her, and she makes her entire team mobile. And like I said, she has pretty good range herself. Caitlyn is another one that's really annoying and again makes enemy most of the time have something like a Lux, which means again range, very hard for you to play against. The good matchups is stuff like Draven, stuff like Kai'Sa, stuff like Aphelios. Champions that, for the most part, are not so mobile, have a medium to low range and very telegraphed and easy to hit champions. Draven has interactions with Carfus such as his passive, he places his passive and then you queue where he needs to go. Either he drops the axe to save HP or he picks up the axe but then he takes HP. Often Dravens put their axe in isolated positions meaning my Carfus queue will also deal more damage. Draven naturally usually will have champions like Nautilus or Rel or Pike or whatever wants to fight and well Carfus also wants to fight. So yeah. On the topic of Carfus wanting to fight, the best supports to play with Carfus is champions like Amumu, Pike, stuff like this. I don't want to play Carfus with range champ. The only range champs that I do think can be good with Carfus is Ash. Ash support with Carfus is not bad. The slow with uh, Ash autos and her pa uh, her W is very good for your Q to hit. Ash has engage for you with R. That's not too bad. Um, so that's one of the better range ones. Bard is fine because Carfus can easily 1v2 and even if you're falling behind, Bard can roam and then Carfus can still be useful with his ulti. If Carfus has a winning top side, he'll pretty much always win the game because he's ulti. And Nami is a pretty good enchanter. Everything like Lulu and Yumi is honestly like dodgeable and reportable. If you're playing with that, that's gonna be really really bad. So that's it for Carfus in bot lane pretty much. Of course there are some niches like Kalista is easy to medium. The problem with Kalista is that she has a lot of mobility, um, uh, but she does want to go in and she makes the game chaotic, which Carfus in bot lane doesn't mind. But she's one of the harder ones to play against compared to like the Kai's and the Draven and stuff like that. Um, but you understand the idea now. So now moving into jungle, what does Carfus want to play against? Carfus clears really, really fast, but he's very immobile and easy to collapse on. So Carfus really likes it to play versus tanks. Pretty much every tank is going to be a good matchup for Carfus because he will just naturally outclear them. So literally any tank. Some tanks will be harder to play against, like Sejuani can be harder, Sack can be harder, simply because Sack can always land onto Carfus and most of the time he can get away afterwards with his ult and stuff and is really tanky and has a lot of sustain. And Sejuani has range engaged to again one shot you and then get out. You know? But the gameplay versus tanks is easy, you farm, you outfarm them, they gank somewhere, you can take their camps, now you're up a level. Even if they somehow do kill you in a teamfight, you are Carfus and you're probably fed and you will have value. The harder matchups, it's hard to come up with hard matchups for Carfus in jungle because jungle roll just depends on so many things. But if I'm going to say something is hard, it's going to be like Rengar. If the Rengar is good, he kills you and then he runs away with his W. A lot of Rengars are bad, so you can often trade one for one. But a good Rengar is annoying to play against, but it depends on many things, because Carfus is way stronger level 1 if you late invade the Rengar. So if you can invade and map split, then the matchup is really really easy. But assuming Rengar has good conditions, meaning like he has the prior lane, so you can't really invade him, your team is weak level 1, Rengar can be a hard matchup for you. Um, 
champions like Graves. I really like this matchup, some don't. I like this matchup because if Graves dashes, that's a free Q because it's so telegraphed. He can't like dash and turn. He dashes straight line, easy Q hit. Um, he has armor in his kit, which is useless versus Carthus. And Graves does not have any CC or any way to really catch me. So I really like this matchup. I think Graves is a bit overrated as a champion. Uh, so I don't mind playing against this. The hardest is flashy assassins that can like get onto you and get out. Uh, Kindred is one that's again similar to Rengar. Kindred is really really weak level 1 compared to Carthus. So again, if you're playing these type of matchups, you should try to invade them early and make you the king of the jungle. Because you are very strong in fights and that's a skill you need to learn as Carthus. You do not pick Carthus to never farm. Car uh, to never fight. Carthus is a fighter. For mid lane Carthus, similar to bot lane, range is basically what's going to counter you, which makes him uh, mid his like worst role out of the free bot lane jungle and mid, but it is playable. Carthus into Silas is completely fine, Carthus versus Akali is completely fine. For the mage matchups, Syndra was his hardest matchup, but now after the changes, I've played that matchup four times now, which isn't a huge sample size, but I can tell when a matchup is playable and not, and that matchup is a lot easier now. Of course, as the game progresses, the Cinder matchup gets hard for Carthus. Um, but hopefully, like let's say at like level 7, hopefully I have gotten something out of my early game, right? And I mean, I'm Carthus, right? I scale well. But yeah, best matchups is melee champions. Again, you don't want to play versus melees that are very mobile, that can get everywhere. So Yasu and Irelia is really hard melee matchups. Um, but the ones that are a bit more stationary, um, like I said, like Silas, for example, he only really has one dash. It's very easy to play. You just go exhaust. He can never kill you. Um, you just free farm, basically. Akali as well is pretty simple. Karfus' biggest issue as well in mid, like one of the biggest ones, is that it's very easy to gank. Similar to like playing like Victor. If I'm playing Victor and I get Trundle Pillared, most of the time I will die. So you have to keep that in mind. Every AFK farming matchup is completely fine for Karfus. So stuff like Corky, completely fine. And I would argue that Carthus can actually become way more useful than Corky. Um, Carthus R is basically Corky Rocket on five people. Um, if played with first strike, which is what you should be doing on mid. So I don't want this video to be 40 minutes, so I'm not going to go more in depth, but you understand the point. Flashy assassins, annoying. Super range perma poke uh, mages, annoying. More stationary champions, easier. Meaning that mages like Talia. Very easy for Carthus to deal with. Now, let's talk about runes. I believe there are two rune pages for Carthus to go. It's Dark Harvest. If you're playing jungle, you're going cheap shot. If you're laning, you're going to his blood. Eyeball, always. Carthus always gets a lot of assists for free. Always Ultimate Hunter. You can go this if you're playing a silver, but this is just good rune. Second one, you have two options. This one, always. And then you either go this or this. I go last stand because if I chose Dark Harvest, I said to myself, I am going to fight and I'm going to fight a lot. This means that this is the best page in bot lane almost always. Like I said, Carthus is really countered by range and he really hates having ranged support. If Carthus has a ranged support, it usually means bot lane is very stable, less all-ins. Less all-ins means I need HP less, which means less value in Taste of Blood. It means I'm not going to be low as often, which means Last Stand has less value. So that's where my second rune page comes in. So yeah, always this as well. My second rune page is First Strike. That's pretty much what I go every game on mid lane. Because in mid lane, you are going to run, first of all, TP in a lot of matchups. The only time you'd go Exhaust is versus Assassins, which you're going to beat anyways. Recalling is not a problem. You will always have Pryo versus like Akali and Silas and stuff like this, as long as you're good at Carthus, um, at least like early game. So you can just go Exhaust and then Recall whenever, and then you don't need TP. Um, but yeah, you can do the old school page if you're feeling like nostalgic. This is what I was running for like, I don't know, like four years because there was nothing else. Um, but this rune page I don't like anymore because second wind and Dorn shield is too OP. But if that ever gets nerfed or Scorch and stuff on the area gets more buffed, this could return. So keep an eye out for that. But yeah, um, if you look at my accounts, I am sure that there's gonna be a game where I play bot lane and I went first strike. So I'm sure we can find an example of this. 
So if you look here, I went first strike. Now I should have went TP here, I was just too late in champ select, I remember. But yeah, here I would always go TP. I'm against Ash Hamer, they double counter me, except for the fact that I can Q Hamer turrets. But Ash is really strong, so here I should go TP. But this is the only time I would ever want to go first strike on Carfus bot lane. Every other time, Dark Harvest is better because you can fight. Look here. Rel, Carfus, Draven, Yumi. Just fight to the death. Perma fight, right? Draven, Leona. I mean, Draven, Rakan, Carfus, Leona. Just fight to the death. Perma fight. You're going to get a lot more Dark Harvest stacks in bot lane than mid lane. So yeah, mid lane, always first strike. If you want to fist, you go airy. Bot lane, Dark Harvest, normally. First strike if your Giga countered or your support is completely useless. But then you should also go teleport. Then you just play for scaling. Now for jungle. Here there's going to be a mix of opinions. You're going to have the people that want Dark Harvest. And you're going to have the people that want First Strike. I think both are fine for jungle. Like, like I said, for mid, First Strike is by far the best. Okay, it's not even close. Bot lane, Harvest is pretty much the best always. But then, in jungle... You could argue for both. So, let me give you an example. I'm playing Carfus in the example of the Rengar match, and I want to fight, I want to invade, right? I know there's going to be a lot of fighting. I can expect the game to be a fist fight. They have Rengar, and they have Akali in mid, and I know it's going to be a complete banger. We could argue to go Dark Harvest in that game, because you're probably going to be trading one for one a lot, potentially dying, and then you have the last stand passive to deal a lot of damage. Um, so even the extra gold and damage for first strike is not worth it. I would argue that... Ideally, you play the first strike and you can still invade level 1 um, and you just don't die because you play better. That's the approach I would take, so I would go first strike. But Dark Harvest does have its potential in jungle for sure. But yeah, there's not a clear favorite. Like I said, the only rune you change is you go cheap shot instead of Taste of Blood. For jungle, on first strike, you will still just go this. You just don't go any of this. You just go this. So yeah, I go first strike in jungle. I can understand Dark Harvest. If you want to play like a complete maniac and always fight, then Dark Harvest is better. But I believe first strike is really, really OP on Carfus. It is really, really strong. And a lot of the time, it is better to ulti early in the fight rather than go and die, which is a concept I will explain soon. So that is it for rune pages. Let's quickly talk about items before we move on to some of the gameplay stuff. So for items. Starting items on Carfus bot lane is always going to be Doran String. For mid lane you only go Corruption Potion if you are against mages that are going to bully you because their poke will keep scaling against you so you want to make sure you have sustain later on. For example, if I'm playing Carfus versus Victor, I'm going to, let's say, at level 5 or level 7, he's going to start having 3 to 4 points in his E. I'm going to get bombed off cooldown. So having 300 HP sustain here for free every time I recall is really, really useful. My gameplay plan on Carfus mid is to bully really hard early levels. Once I get control, I slow push. And then I fight really hard and I crash and I recall. I come back to lane and I crash and I recall. And I keep this cycle of consistently perma fist fighting okay i enter the lane okay and this is how i play carfus in mid this is how i make it work on the top of eus ladder for like four plus seasons now that i've been playing this champion i enter the lane level one and i will fight i will fight and i will try to hit some cues if i miss some cues i'll play more for the wave if i actually end up hitting a lot of cues i might even all into the death level one once I have a slow push because I'm really strong level 1, I build that slow push and then I crash 3rd or I crash the 4th wave. And I make sure I fight as much as possible while doing this because I can have my E on in the wave and I'll get to push while dealing damage. Then I will recall, enemy mid is low and half mana and stuff, I walk back to lane. I come back to lane, wave is here, I freeze and they come back and then either I let them crash or I fight them on the freeze, it depends, right, what's happening. But the idea is... Carfus can get poked down by a lot of mages, but his wave clear is really strong as long as you're all in. So if you understand you're going to get poked, all in them instead, so you can crash and base. And just cycle that on repeat. Usually I only last 3 to 4 waves 
once we start getting to like level six point. But since I always all in and base, all in and base, I can recall a lot. My build order on Carthus mid is usually Sork, Sork Shoes, Corruption Potion and the Dark Seal. I rush Sork Shoes because it's a lot of damage, but again because of my game plan. My game plan is to push and base, push and base, push and base. If I rush chapter, I can't push and base, push and base, push and base, because every time I base, I will lose like 2 CS because I'm so slow. But if I go Sork Shoes, my all-ins are better because more movement speed. My bases are better because more movement speed. So that's the build path. Everything else is similar, like everything else is the exact same, like Leandry versus Ludens, etc. For jungle, your build path does not change except for you don't prioritize mana. You should always buy Codex and Dark Seal, not Chapter. Codex and Dark Seal is more AP. It's the same CDR, you just lost mana. But you also got the Dark Seal to then, you know, stack your Dark Seal, which is OP. For bot lane, obviously chapter is very, very nice to have. You don't want to rush into Codex, you need the mana. <laughs> That's it. Everything else is going to be the same every roll. So then the question is Leandry versus Ludens. Most Carthus one tricks do Leandry's every game. This is bad because Carthus has really high base damages. He really likes magic penetration. Carthus is really countered by shield comps and champs that can just sustain his Leandry bleed and stuff. And a lot of the time you can go for like Luden, Shadow Flame, Void Stuff, uh, Sork Shoes, and just completely one shot with ulti first strike a lot of time too, and they are just dead before they can do anything. So Leandris is good when you don't think that you can one shot, you think that the fights will be long and there's nothing you can do about it, then you would want to go Leandris. If you have Maniac Champions on your team or things that allows you to one shot, so for example I'm playing Carthus Zed or Carthus Pike, you know, Carthus Kled Talon, just, and we're gonna fight enemy squishy jungle whatever then I want to go Ludens and just magic pen void stuff is core item on Carthus every single game if you're ever going to not go void stuff on Carthus it has to be because you're solo AP and enemy has like three or four range champions on their team because range champs have so low MR then you can go like I said Ludens shadow flame um, and Sorks, and then if you're rich you go Rabadon's third, but then even fourth you should still go Void Stuff. Void Stuff is just a lot of damage. My normal build is Leandry into Void, and then my third item is Shadow Flame, and then it's Rabadon's. That's my core build usually. Like I said, in one-shot games I will go Loot and Shadow Flame. So let me show you some examples. In this game, you see I went Leandry. If you look at their team comp, it is hard to one-shot them. Most of them are relatively tanky, and if you look at my team comp, right, I have a fucking Maokai and I have a Leona. So the only ones that can help me one-shot is Graves and Aatrox. The benefits of going one-shot build in this game would be to help Aatrox get a reset. But again, I don't believe we can easily one-shot them. So I went for Leandry. Then I went for Shadow Flame because they were not building any MR and they have a Karma. Again, Karma is Giga counter to Karthus and will shield everybody on her team, which means Shadow Flame gets value. <laughs> Then we take a look at this game. Again, cannot one-shot Olaf, cannot one-shot Viego. Again, there is a Karma. So you will always see me have Shadow Flame versus Karma. It's a very good item into Karma. But again, if enemy is buying MR, then Void Stuff is of course really good, even though it's against Karma. If you look at some of my other games, today I had this game. You see here I have a Victor. I know that they, these guys will buy MR, even before they did buy it. So if you look at this game, you see once I complete my Morellos, I went straight for Void Stuff. Even though it's really early into the game and they haven't bought MR yet, I know that they have to buy MR in the future because I'm Carthus and Victor. They are also basically triple melee topside. The Cho'Gath and Mundo at least will have a lot of MR just by default because that's how melee champions are designed. So yeah, Magic Pen, OP on Carthus. Ludens and Leandris are both good on Carthus. If you look this game, for example, you see I have full one-shot build. Look at their team comp. Four of their champs are relatively easy to one-shot. You look at my team comp, Yon, Rengar, Aatrox. We really want resets on Aatrox, and we have a team comp to allow that. Yes, I deal less damage to Garen, but everybody else gets one-shot completely. The first strike build, where you tend to ulti before the fight to proc your first wreck on everyone, 
the Leander build gives more gold because it's more damage during the bleed. But the Ludens plus the first strike allows for one shots. I don't even joke. Like I'm not joking. At level 16, if you ulti and they have a squishy team comp, you can get one to two to three kills instantly. I have done it and I have posted it on my Twitter. That's it for builds. For skill order, always do Q max and then you do E max. Don't try to be funny and do W max second or anything like this. You never do E max, it's complete bait. If you need to rely on E max, you should not play Carthus. I'm sorry, Stevens Jax, but that's just how it is. Exhaust, pretty much always on bot lane, never go cleanse, only go TP if you're outranged. And that's that. Let me show you how you play Carthus in the bot lane. So, game starts, Yumi comes, she was AFK a bit, but I will always want to fight. No matter what, I will always fight. Unless I have really OP champions. Then I will slow push and I will want to dive. Carthus should always want to dive. You should always want to dive as Carthus. You have your passive. You have Last Stand, you have Dark Harvest. No matter what happens, as long as one person dies, it is worth it. If you get one kill, an enemy gets two, but they lose a wave like this, it is worth it. So, in this game, you will see that there's just a lot of fighting and just perma fighting on repeat. And you need to learn your limits on Carthus and you need to just keep fighting. In a lot of my bot lane games, I will die a lot. Unless I'm getting carried. If I'm getting carried, I will, of course, just like every champion, try to get carried. So that's this game, just perma fighting. Let's go on a different game. So what happened this game? Oh my god, I remember this game. So, of course it doesn't always go so well. Here, enemy jungle did three camps bot side and ganked us. So we die. Unlucky. This is of course the um, outcome that can happen. But even this went pretty close. If I hit a couple more Qs on Viego and spaced a bit better, could have killed him. I tried to ping Graves though to skip his camps and come because we could have again dove them bot lane because if you look at early levels, it is again a blood buff. We start the lane, I spam ping to all in, we all in the Lucian, he instantly flashes. I posture aggressive for Qs and I mean we get this next Q up, I posture aggressive. Notice how I try to farm with auto attacks, that's something you need to practice as well. Every time that you are confident in a last hit, do it with your auto, not with your Q. Your Q costs 20 mana. When you have E rank 1, it's only 15 mana return. So it's a 5 mana loss every time you Q a creep. So yeah, we just all in on repeat. There, that time he cleansed. I flash in because he cleansed, right? And I missed some Q sadly, which leads to this not being a kill. But in a different game, I will hit more Qs. And then this guy's dead. So you should always do this. Because it's always a gamble, but this is how you will snowball at Scarfus. The next game I will get killed. This one I didn't. But he's still low and my jungle is puffing down. So this is a free dive. Lucian has no cleanse, no flash, and he's this HP. He will be about this HP when my grace is bot side. So I ping my graves to now come dive to capitalize on this. If he dives now, enemy bot is completely out of the game. If he doesn't want to die, well, unlucky, he's bad. Sucks. Nothing I can do. But we keep fighting to try to win the game. We kill Lucian and we trade one for one. Look the wave. Always worth it. Carthus will also get the golden EXP because you're still here when you die. This is a good death, like someone may say. Let's go to this one. What happens in this one? Again, bot lane is completely exploded. I think this is the game I lost my hands completely in. Oh god, yes it is. So, you will see. This game, I completely shit the bed. Here's an example of a gank again. Enemy jungle tries to gank me. I fight back. I don't care. We should fight. I am strong. Enemy is not. My champion is really OP. You could say they shouldn't gank me. Yeah, but this is 1k LP games. So we fight, we fight, and then a ping for dive, and we dive. This is three games in a row now, like straight in a row. There, kill them, proxy farm them, kill them. Sejuani comes from base, I die, but I got two kills. 
and it's always going to be like this. Here I'm playing bot lane again. Enemy is at once again 10 HP. I slow push, I spam ping to dive. I ping him to come and dive. We dive, Tristana is dead. We dive Sona, I tank on purpose because if a Nautilus tanks and he dies, that is worth a uh, worse. I die, I get fast reset plus kill the wave. Do you see? I take the entire wave and you will always get the entire wave like this. So now I get more gold on my reset, allowing me to get Sork Shoes if I want, or Double Ampton, whatever I want to get. I can get it. And me giving gold, or Nautilus giving gold, it doesn't matter, because it's the same amount of gold. And you'll see it's just perma fighting. here I miss Unlucky Q again. But you just have to keep playing and keep practicing, and that is how you play Carfus in the bot lane. Like I said, mid lane is completely different. You fight like a maniac, but it's not to get a kill, it's to get a reset. In bot lane is to fight to get a kill and create action, because you're a lot stronger with a support with you. But in mid lane, often they have more sustain, and you're more vulnerable to gank, so you can't play like this exactly. I hope this guide helps you guys understand. I wish I had more mid lane gameplay, but I have been just spamming bot lane, so I don't really have much mid lane Carfus gameplay. Um, but I'm sure in the future I will have, but I did explain how I want to play it in late game. Just try to farm, just always try to farm. You want to get 16. You need to get items. No matter what you're doing, you're going to have purpose on Carfus because you have your ulti. Someone shared with me this year that I actually have the most gold earned of EU West players on my main champions, on Carfus and Vagar, and that just shows how much I prioritize making sure I get camps and waves properly and manage my waves. It's so important to farm on Carfus, you should never stop farming. But sometimes you want to farm aggressively, like proxy farming or farming inside enemy jungle. Point is you need to get gold and you need to utilize your ulti and your global pressure. And make yourself known in the game. What I mean by that is, a lot of Carfuses, they take this advice to heart and they farm and farm and farm, but they don't do anything. They don't fight. And then you have the Carfuses that only fight. And then they int and they int and int. And that's bad as well. If you look at a lot of my games, the games that I'm losing, I have a lot of deaths. Why? Is it because we've lost because I'm getting caught? I would like to say no, it's not. In my opinion, the reason why I have a lot of deaths is because I fight more when I'm losing to try to come back. Like I said, if my teammates are winning, I have no problem being one death, two death. I don't mind. I don't think you should always die on Carfus. Because if you die, just like every other champion, you give enemy team gold. Carfus tends to have a lot of gold, meaning you often have shutdown. Carfus tends to have dark seal, so you're giving them shutdown gold, dark seal gold. If you're, <coughs> if you're dead, you cannot help on Baron or Dragon. You cannot take enemy jungle camps, you cannot take a tower, you cannot take a wave. If you're permanently dying, you'll often lose a wave as well. You might get the wave that you're on because you're dead, but you're not going to get the next wave because you're walking back on the map. But if you're staying alive, you will be more useful. So you have to find this balance of understanding when do I want to go in and die. Right? Like if it's a game winning fight, you see a chance to flash in and die, then go for it. Sometimes I'm just staying alive as like I'm a backline champ and I'm just queuing and queuing and queuing. Because like I said, if you die, you can only do 3 to 4 queues and then ulti. If I'm alive, I can do 5 queues and then die. And then Q four times and then ulti. So you, that's a skill you need to learn. Carfus is not as easy as just run in and die and press ult. Because if it was, a lot more people would be high elo on Carfus. So yeah. That's that. Let's try to see some team fights. I don't remember these games. I don't know exactly what happened. But if you see here, right? I could flash in here if I wanted to, but if I do that, right? I'm not here with my team yet. Instead I try to wait, and then we fight now. We kill Renekton, my team follows up. And now we go in and we ace them all. I have a fat shot on this game, so I don't want to just die. Right? But if I don't, if I don't have a fat shot down and stuff like that, and the game's more close, I think it's more fine to flip it and int it. 
But here I want to make sure I don't int and just flash in and get one shot. If I flash in and get one shot, Zed falls up and then we're both dead. If enemy runs away, the game is fucked. I don't want to rely on my team winning. Here, if I'm alive, we'll get dragon no matter what. Nothing bad can happen. I'm really, really strong. But yeah. I mean, like I said, I have no script and stuff for that, like, written for my fucking videos. I can only show you stuff. Like here, if I remember correctly, I was scared of them chasing me down. Like, this game was pretty recent. So like here, I realized that now I stepped too far. So like here, you miss just gonna run me down with Bellwet. So here, I just run in and just die. But we trade back at least. Right, so it's not as bad. And stuff like this that you need to just learn on Carfus. Of course, it's a mistake to get caught. I shouldn't get caught. I should run. But here, at this point, I'm fucked. So I commit to the fight. And you need to learn this balance of when to back off and when to not. Right, like if you look at this game, let's see some of my devs. Let's see how they are. Like the ones in team fights. Or was this... This is the complete open game, I think. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing happening in this game, actually. There's nothing to talk about. Sucks. Here you see, here's the time where I think suiciding is good. This is actually a really good example. I have no shutdown, nothing, okay? And my team is actually on a winning team. But if you look here, the only way a fight starts here is if I go in. If I don't go in, nothing happens. Enemy just takes the tower and just leaves. Look how far away my team is. So I go in, knowing that I have ulti, and I can get off a lot of Qs and E damage, making them low, and now I'm a lot more useful in the game overall than just staying alive. Keep in mind, this is a game where I'm also really useless in, in general. So this, in my mind, is a good way to like int and good situation to int in. But it's not something you should do every single time. Because like you see now, when I'm dead, I cannot go and farm this bot wave, right? Enemy is in base and half of them are dead. I could have farmed this bot wave now if I was alive, I cannot. I could have farmed wolves and grump, and if said shows bot lane, I could go and farm top. I cannot do these things because I'm dead. So yeah, I am losing stuff by being dead. But I don't value that as much now, because we really need to win, right? And this was a way to start a fight. And it's pretty good to start a fight here, Dragon is about to spawn. And that, like I said, like, yes, I can sit back, I can queue this max range, not die, and play safe. But if I do that, I don't see how I will have value in the game. So I start a fight, Diana flashes as well, which is really, really good for us. Diana flashing is huge for the game. And we get a fight. Final thing that I want to touch on is about drafting Carfus because there will be people watching this wondering about Carfus for pro play, for team play, clash, whatever. Carfus is a free man flex. In theory, a five man, but let's be realistic, it's a free, free man flex. Mid, bot, and jungle. The advantage of being able to play mid is that when you force Carfus jungle, the problem you will notice is that First of all, the jungler tends to have the engage and the CC. Carfus doesn't really have this. He has engage in the sense that he removed 25% at least of enemy's HP bar. So it allows you guys to go for more greedy engages. But he doesn't have engage in the fashion of a Jarvan or a Sack or a Sejuani. This means that usually you would need something like this. But sometimes you would want a Lulu Jinx. And then if you end up with Lulu Jinx and Carfus, if enemy has range, you're fucked. But then, if you now have this, and enemy has range, you are not fucked. Because your Jinx can get a reset off of one kill plus Carfus ulti, and Jarvan and Orn can set up the fight. So now you don't really need to engage. But if you had Carfus in jungle, this is not really possible as easy. 
So that's the main advantage of having mid is you can flex him to mid and he's going to be fine in most matchups. And he has a lot of tools to help your team with. He is great at helping your side lane, Trindamere or Camille or whatever. So for Karthus Jungle, your drafts will usually look like this. Some AD champion mid that's strong. Champs like this. Whatever AD champion mid is strong at the current patch you're playing in. But then if you're able to flex into mid, <clears throat> to mid, you can make some pretty cool drafts happen. That can be very strong. Karthus in bot lane, it's again just a flex. You would pick it in bot lane if you have good uh, matchup. The problem with Karthus bot lane that can easily happen is that you will then quickly end up with double AP mid and bot lane. And that can not be as good in some games. Whereas if you put Karthus mid, he will more often be solo AP. When you draft Karthus, he wants fights to start. Either through enemy coming into him, if enemy needs to come into you, you don't need engage as much. But generally Karthus likes engage. He likes champions that can start fights and use his ult pressure. So like I said, Camille, Trindamere, any top lane champion that's in a 1v1. If the top lane matchup is really close, the Karthus R itself can really swing it. Especially if it's a Karthus in mid lane. Because his uh, ulti will be more skilled. It'll be like 2 points when normally in bot lane it'll be 1 point. You'll do more damage because you'll have first strike. So that is something to think about. Obviously the same logic can be applied to champions like Ryze and TF. They can roam and help the Jax, right? Of course. But I'm saying to flex him to mid, you must have picked Karthus early in draft, right? You picked him on R2. So I'm just saying the value you can get of putting him mid. It will help your top laner. In a lot of cases. So a nice Karthus draft for example could look like this. Now you have Engage to start a fight with your ulti and there's a lot of silent plays happening. Uh, Nocturne is also of course good. The more Engage you have on your team the less Engage your bot lane needs to pick. If you have a jungler like let's say Graves with Karthus your bot lane really needs to make up for the lack of engage, otherwise your ulti quickly only becomes a poke tool and that just allows enemy to heal up with lifesteal, uh, shield it or whatever and there's no punish. For example, locket is a counter to Karthus, right? But if I Karthus ult and they're gonna locket it, then my engage should be able to kill them. But if I don't have engage, nothing much happens. The best poke champs to have with Karthus is champions like Jace. When Jace is really OP, <coughs> Karthus Jace is a very deadly combo. Because essentially, one Jace combo, uh, like QE, means Karthus with R will kill them. You know, champions like... Um, fuck, I was thinking of one. What was it? Ah, shit. Varus, yeah, Varus. When Varus Lethality was really strong, Varus, uh, Karthus was also really good. And, and Varus offers, again, that type of like engage with R to try to start fights. So, yeah. That's all I got. It's a long video, of course, but it's a lot of knowledge and things to think about for Karthus. So I hope whoever watched this learned something and you're gonna carry on and play Karthus and make me proud. So thank you guys for watching.